My next guest uh, is coming in. Now, this is always a big time of the year with the Academy Awards. And with me right now is Paul Hood. Hello, Paul. Hey, how you doing? Now, Paul, let me kind of introduce you and let you know, let, let our listeners know who you are. You are a local movie reviewer. That is correct. Local movie reviewers, say your movie reviews are on PennLive.com? That's right. They're on PennLive.com. You go to the entertainment section, click on that, and then click on movies, and then right there, I'm, I'm usually on the front page there. So. so you pretty much, you love movies. I love movies. Um I'm so passionate about film, it's it's unreal, actually. So. Now, why does do you also work for the Patriot News? Now, here's the thing. I actually just write for Penn Live. And, well, isn't uh, Penn Live part of the Patriot it's News? It's part of Patriot News, but I don't actually write for the print publication. Do, does the Patriot News have a movie reviewer? No, they do not. Are they, you serious? Yes, that is correct. They actually so that ha- stinking rag <laughs> doesn't have a local movie reviewer, and they just rip and read off syndicates yes, sir, for movie that's reviewers? Right. Yes. Doesn't um, that bother you? you? Pull from the AP. Well, uh, yeah, on occasion. Being a local guy? Yeah, being a local guy that's passionate about film. Um, uh, you Who's know, the editor there? Kirkpatrick or whatever? You yeah. should You should call him up. I think I will. Mr. Kirkpatrick, this guy needs to be a movie reviewer. He, <laughs> you need to read his articles and get in there. Yeah. And I think that's rightfully right, rightfully so. So as you sit there, so as the Academy Awards is coming up on Sunday, it's yep. like the Super Bowl for people and entertainment and movies. Yes, there will be parties abound everywhere. So uh, have you real? Have you ever been to a Super Bowl party? Well, I've been to a lot of Super Bowl parties. Have you ever been to an Academy Awards party? Oh yes, I went to last really? year. I went to the. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you really have? Yes, <laughs> last year I went to the Midtown Cinemas. Um, annual uh, Oscar party. Actually, I think that was the first one they had last year. Um, and this year I'm going, you know, this Sunday I'm going again. How so. is the uh, how's the Midtown Cinema doing? That was a, that was a local grassroots project. Yes, and I think Todd Schill was involved in that. Todd Schill was involved and in that. And he got I think that. Mayor Reed helped out with that also. Put yeah, that together. That's correct. Uh, it's doing better than ever. Actually, they're getting a lot of the films that we normally wouldn't wouldn't get in this area. Uh, so it's still an indie place. You're still you're seeing a lot yeah, of indie a films. A lot of independent films. You're not going to see it at the Regal Cinema or the main. The main houses, but yeah, but you'll see stuff yeah, at the Midtown Cinema. Exactly, they're getting the films that you would we would normally have to drive to Philly to see. So right, yeah, they're doing a great job. Uh, Kevin Knox and uh, Amy uh, Jeanette Trout, uh, they're the managers now at the theater, and they're doing a splendid job there. So five four zero zero five eighty five four zero zero five eighty. So as you sit here and look at the Academy Awards, okay. And you look at what's going on. I mean, was this a good crop of movies that you're seeing in front of us? Was it, was it a good year for movies? It was a good year for movies. Um, mainly, actually, it was a better year for performances, I think. Uh, I think um, some of the movies were kind of like um, a little mediocre as far as like, uh, you know, what they did at the box office. And when you put the numbers together, they right. didn't really do that well. But when you Are more the- people going to movies? Are they just sitting at home watching on DVDs? Are they watching it online on their iPad? How are people consuming uh, cinema these days? People are actually using the uh, internet, Netflix, for you know, for example. Yeah. Uh, people are doing the online thing. Um, everything seems to be in 3D now, and the tickets are like 12 bucks. So a lot of people are staying home, unless they can get to places like the Midtown Cinema that are inexpensive and have you know a good crop, of, you know, a good quality of film. If you have a favorite movie that you think is going to win uh, Picture of the Year, five four zero zero five eighty. I want to hear what the listeners think or what they what they liked and saw. This past year, five four zero zero five eighty. I want to know what your favorite picture is, or just something that you liked in movies, whether it's an actor, an actress, or whatever. Uh, give us a call five four zero zero five eighty. When you sit here and look at uh, best picture, there's a bunch. Has there always been ten nominations that that have gone through? Actually, they have just uh, as of last year, they've added more films to that uh, category. So there's uh, films you would never think would make it to, uh, you know, as far as best picture. Right. They're, they're in there now, so there's so, more to choose from. Right. When you look at these choices, you have Black Swan, mm-hmm. The Fighter, That's right. Inception, mm-hmm. The Kids Are All Right, The King's Speech, 127 Hours, uh, which was that movie. I, don't, I didn't even know what that was about. I guess some guy was caught in a ledge or something yeah, like that. Yeah, it's, it's based on the story of uh, Aaron Ralston, uh, who was like a canyoneering expert. Uh, he goes out into the middle of Moab, uh, Utah. Yeah. And he's kind of a loner. He likes to do things on his on his own and isolate himself from the world just to kind of experience that whole adventure. So he goes out and he's um, he's you know he gets caught up and he slips on a rock and falls into a, like a crevice, and the rock pins his arm. Uh oh. And that's just cut it off. 
It, that's exactly what he did. Did he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, did I give away the, did no, I give away everyone, the line? No, everyone knows uh, the – if you're pr- familiar with that um, story of Aaron Ralston, uh, which NBC Dateline did a story on. Yeah. All right, we have uh, Joe from Harrisburg. Hi, Joe. Welcome to the Bob Durgan Show. We're talking movies right now. Hello, how are you? Hey, so far so good. I see there's some cloud cover in Harrisburg now. It was sunshine, now we got cloud cover. Joe, talk to us about movies. Well, uh, I'm relatively unimpressed with a lot of film that's been coming out for the past couple years, but there are a few gems here and there. I just uh, wanted to know, to know if anyone went out to go even see the new Tron movie. Uh, actually, I did see the new Tron movie. Really? Yes. Um, now, now, Joe, if you don't mind me asking, what did you think of the Tron movie? I liked it pretty good. I'm not so big on the 3D gimmick. I think it's kind of the only way they can draw audiences to go see a film in a theater these days. But. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think um, the onslaught of 3D movies is uh, actually ruining the, the is raw, it over? raw artistry of is, film. Is 3D over? Yeah, it, let's make it over. Let's, oh, let's ban 3D it's people. Me. <laughs> it, it's killing me. Now, it comes um, back every three years. You know, every, every three or four years, 3D is big and it's back. And it goes yeah. away and then it comes back. Now, Joe, let me, let me just ask you a question. As you sat there and saw Tron, they used a new technology where they had a Jeff Bridges, and what they did was they transformed him back using computer technology yeah, yeah. back to a very young, like 20-year-old Jeff Bridges, yeah. like when he filmed that. And they're saying now that these actors, you can go into a movie right now, you can have like Meryl Streep, and she looked like she's 18 again, and she could act the role herself in front of the camera. The computers will then just generate her back to like when she's 18. Yeah. So it- now an actor... There's no age-specific mm-hmm. performance now when an actor does sign up for a movie. Yeah, well, right. they did the same thing in Benjamin Button with Brad Pitt right. when they aged him backwards. And they actually but they say it's the crazier technology. now. Yeah, so the, the technology that we have is great, but I think it's being overused in film today, and it's, it's taken away, like I said, from the artistry of like, um, you know, what film is all about. Joe, what was your favorite film for the year? For the year? Uh, I, liked, I actually liked the remake of True Grit. You liked it? A lot. It was very close to the book. I thought I thought it was very good. Uh, the John Wayne one is also a classic, of course, but this one did very well. All right. All right, Joe, thank you for calling the Bob Durgan Show today. You're hey, welcome. Thank uh, you. Have a good one. Thanks, you Joe. got it. Steve, you're on the line with the Bob Durgan Show. You're on with Paul Hood, local movie reviewer. How you doing, Steve? How you doing? How you doing? Good. So far. Well, I just wanted to ask him. I wanted to know what his thoughts were about the, the movie Inception. Oh, Inception. Actually, I loved Inception. Uh, I think uh, Christopher Nolan is the closest thing we have to the new Hitchcock. Um, like and He's the director? Yes, Christopher Nolan is the director of uh, Inception. He also directed the uh, Dark Knight um, series. Batman. Batman, yes. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, yeah. I, I loved Inception. I, I, I enjoyed the characters in the film and also some of the, uh, the conflict that the main character had to you know, deal with throughout, throughout the story. And I think he tied that in well with the uh, overall, um, the mystery of you know the film and the the uh, the ending of the film was great and it kind of just yeah. you know left so there. so Steve yeah. I'll ask you and Paul was that movie sometimes they say uh, if a movie's going to make get uh, considered for an Academy Award it's all in the timing was that a movie that was released too soon because that was the first first half of the year release wasn't it yeah I I, I have yeah. to agree I think it was released uh, too early I think usually. In in the business, the um, the Oscar worthy films usually come out closer toward the fall, right? And yeah, I like think, November or whatnot. Yeah, right? like October, yeah. November. So I, I'm thinking. So do you think that the timing in that hurt this movie? Yes, I'm pretty sure because after you know Inception got all the hype and everyone was crazy about it, and then we got punched in the face with uh, Social Network, which was you know brilliant as far as the writing. Steve, you agree with the timing issue? Uh, I definitely do. What, what do you think? Comparison: Social Network or or uh, Inception? I would have to say uh, Social Network because of its relevance. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Aaron Sorkin's probably one of the best screenwriters alive today. Uh, he's amazing. Um, yeah. And I attribute that to his work he's done on you know for theater, uh, and that's why his dialogue is so um, you know is so clever. And that was Leo. Yeah. 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 Right. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, man. I'm voting for True Grit. I'll tell you what. That's my, my number one movie of the year. You, okay, cool. You, you love True Grit. I'll tell you what. I thought the cinematography in True Grit was unreal. Yeah, the yeah. Coen brothers are great. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks Thanks for the call, Steve. We're going to switch over to... Right, thanks a lot, Steve. Mike. Mike, how you doing, buddy? Welcome to the Bob Durgan Show. 540-0580 is the phone number. 540-0580. We're talking movies at the top of the hour. Give us a call right now. Hi, Mike. Welcome to the show. You're on with Paul Hood. Hey, thanks, guys. Uh, Paul, listen, I have a question for you. Sure, what do no you problem. What about the, uh, 
remake of Red Dawn. Uh, any idea on a release date? And then what do you think of the movie relative to the geopolitical landscape right now? Oh, well, the Red Dawn, uh, I, would, I would have to say, is um, one of those movies where it's... Um, now, as far as the release date, I haven't gotten any information. Is this on the remake from the Patrick Swayze movie? Yeah. So. Red Dawn? Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, 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 it's not from the Russians the... anymore. It's the Chinese. I got it. Yeah. So, um, basically, yeah, I would have to say the relevance right now is kind of, um, I don't know. I think the timing is a little off with that film. I, I hope it does well. I'll tell you what. I don't understand the question, and I don't understand your answer, so we're going to be back <laughs> right after this. <laughs> Oh, man, it's the end of a Friday. I can't <laughs> wait. It is Friday. 540-0580, 540-0580. It's the Bob Durgan Show. Bob will be back on Monday. Everyone We're- in Harrisburg should be at a movie right now. Really? Yes. This early? This like, early. Like- I mean, like, right now. Like, everyone go to the movies right you now. You know what's it's funny to me is right. when people know that the Academy Awards are coming up, they always get their list together, and they go, oh, well, I need to see as many movies as possible. Mm-hmm. Like, there must be an uptick. In sales, as the Academy Awards get closer, like be- the week before, because everyone feels the pressure of going to see a movie, and then afterwards when they go, when a, when a movie gets awarded, then they probably go right afterwards. Yeah, the studios do, like, uh, all right, they re-release, re-release films as soon as they find out their, you know, their film is nominated or an actor in their film or an actress is nominated for an Oscar. So they you know, re-release the films, and then everyone wants to go see them. All right, Dave. Dave. Welcome to the Bob Durgan Show today. 540580, we're talking movies and the Academy Awards. Hi, Dave. Hi, uh, man. What a pleasant surprise. I just turned the radio on, and I, I didn't hear all the hate radio and Bob and the rest of the haters on there. It was a, it's a good change, but uh, that's appreciate. not the reason I'm calling. Go yeah, ahead. A, you have a good show on. Um, I, I do want to go to a movie this weekend, and what is the most must-see movie if I want to see just one movie this weekend, what what do you suggest I go see? Okay, what haven't you seen, or what? Have I you haven't heard seen of? anything. I haven't seen thing. anything. Okay, no, uh, actually, right now I would well, say the, the only possibility of movies you can see right yeah. now are Black Swan. Mm-hmm. You could probably still see The Fighter, King's Speech. Okay, and that's pro- is True Grit still out? True Grit is still. Out. It might be it done. Might be yeah. You so your only it. options are really as far as theater are King's Speech. The Fighter and Black Swan. Yeah, what type of movie watcher are you? Like, what do you like? Okay, I don't. I don't want to see a Mamma Mia type okay. of a music movie. Yeah, you don't want to see. A yeah, I don't want a musical. So, which one of those? Uh, you, thanks for calling, Dave. Okay, well, thank you very much. No Appreciate problem. It. You got it. Uh, five four zero zero five eighty. It's the Bob Durgan show. Now, you know when I I saw uh, Toy Story is one of the pictures that are nominated. Yes. When I saw this movie, I saw it in the, I guess it was spring or summer, mm-hmm. whenever it came out. Yeah. This was a movie that I watched. I was like. I saw all the previous Toy Story 3s, yeah, 1 and yeah. 2. And this movie, this is a movie that I cried at. Yeah. I literally, and, and there was a fad because mm-hmm. the story comes out to